So this is the Lancashire Mining Museum in Astley Green. It's the last remaining pit head in Lancashire. Long story short, it was saved by the Lord Lieutenant of Lancashire just as they were literally about to hack it apart and take it away for scrap metal. And directly behind it is the um, engine house. There were originally two shafts like this mine, so there would have been two sets of winding headgear. And you say what you like, those miners had a lot of courage doing their job. And that's the steps up to the uh, engine house entrance. That is just phenomenal. The scale of it. There's something you need to see for yourself. It's hard to uh, show the sheer scale of this piece of machinery. Miners' lights. Some of the communication devices that were used over time. There's the old clocking in clock. Get your card stamped so they knew how many hours you put in. Uh, that's a model of how the winding gear used to work and lower the cage down to the coal face. This was a particularly deep mine. Yeah, it went down 2,670 feet. Could have got five Blackpool Towers on in it and still had room for the uh, winding gear at the top. That's worth a read. It tells a couple of incredible stories about men who survived accidents. Another fascinating thing is this engine house, which is ginormous. They um, half tiled the walls all the way around, around it with quite ornate tiling too. As I say, the scale of it is overwhelming. A few tasty spanners there. He's had a busy day. This engine is the largest steam engine in the world and it was specifically built for this colliery. King Dick Spanner. That's got a big end on it. Again, that's all worth a read if you're so inclined. village could hear the start and the end of the shifts and the sound of the whistle. Yeah, I'll try the whistle. machinery here unrestored but going back to the day
that noise you can hear is big diesel engines running that's um, creating the power for the uh, engines to run in the uh, engine house. So that's the engine house where we just were, where the machinery was running. And that's the pit head with the winding wheels that uh, that would have been driving. The mine is now flooded. That's the old hydraulic acros they used to uh, hold the roof of the mine up with. Fred Dibner, the famous steeplejack, built this um, <laughs> pit head in his back garden and apparently he started to sink a shaft. Um, but he got stopped by the local council. They've got lots of old stuff knocking about in the yard. There's an old railway carriage. So this is the pit head number one. That's now a listed monument, but uh, it was only saved at the 11th hour from complete demolition and being cut up for scrap. And there's, uh, that's the cage. It tells of a story of an accident here at the mine and uh, consequently when the men arrived for the afternoon shift they were told there was no work because there'd been this accident and uh, they've just made a display of, in memorial of the, the poor blokes that uh, were caught up in all that does need serious money spent on it and they're appealing for donations to save it otherwise it will go eventually. These carriages are what they used to transport the miners in to the coal face once they'd gone down in the lift cage and it could have been as much as two miles underground to get to the working coal face. Talk about a day trip. That's the big air compressors they used to drive the uh, engine. Back in the day it would have been steam driven but these days air compression and diesel engines do the job. And there's the railway station. This would have been the backyard, I think. It's about 11 years old. And he's still where you were stood. And he's looking round. Where's your telly? <laughs> I said, we didn't have a telly. No. Well, what did you watch? I said, we watched the fire. How could you watch a fire? I said, we should make pictures and animals out of the flames. Oh, I said, we know electric. Well, what's them, do you? I said, the gas lights. Yeah. You have the gas lights in your house? I said, aye. And you cook, well, did, you didn't cook on them? I said, no. Oh, I said, we cooked hot fire and we boiled the water hot fire as well. Yeah, absolutely. Said, wow. I said, in it winter when it was cold, I said, inside the windy panes, you used to get beautiful pictures 
of all ice on the window. Why didn't you put your eating on? I said, we haven't got eating. We've only got the fire. Oh. And then you can see the legs ticking over. I thought, bless his cotton sock. <laughs> He's going to scrap. Because his shoulders came in, his hands went up and he went, oh. How did you charge your phone up? <laughs> and he was literally <laughs> horrified. <laughs> The Lancashire Mining Museum, well worth a visit, absolutely fascinating history. Right, we're just leaving Astley Green, so we're just leaving Astley Green after a really rainy Saturday, all the rain most of the day, but we did manage to go and visit the uh, Lancashire Mining Museum, which was fascinating. Here's another intrepid traveller standing on the roof, surveying the land. Morning. So hopefully uh, we can find some supplies in Lee, which is just up from Mashley Green, because my gin bottles run out and I need to go and replenish stocks. Nice knows what he's doing. Start a fire, cook his breakfast, who knows? Well, it was a very rainy day all day yesterday. Today it's not raining, it's looking threatening though. But the amount of people out on this towpath 
they must all have been going stir crazy and the second they could they're out loads of them They're like marauding hell's angels, but they're on bicycles. Cruising Club. Got a few boats packed in there, really tight. display of bedding plants there and a nice display of light bulbs Well, we're coming into Lee now, where the uh, Bridgewater Canal changes into the Leeds and Liverpool. Uh, it's clearly got quite a lot of industrial heritage, this massive great, what I would think is probably an old mill right in front of us. Basin. Looks like they have a dry dock there. Or... Boat out on blocks, ready for blacking. interesting building, it's been refurbished, it's got a new roof on it, or 
is it even a brand new building that has been done in the architectural style? Interesting. What happens if you want to get the boat out right back? Brand new housing estate opposite the uh, boat yard. Oh. So this bridge coming up marks the point where we leave the Bridgewater Canal and go on to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal Lee Branch. I would think there's probably an Aldi around here somewhere. Hello. Hello. Well, that's really handy, Harry. Aldi's literally 50 yards down the road. some supplies. Dead off sit the water side in. Really interesting building as well over there. Sort of old warehouse, stone wharf. So this would have been a wharf building warehouse at one point in its life which then reverted in recent history to being the Waterside Inn which has fallen on hard times, no longer in business and uh, the windows are all security protected. It is, however, right on the canal side, and we're more dead opposite it. That's uh, the canal side of it. It's an interesting old building, though. 